Welcome to Vice Casting Couch, Season 1, Episode 17. I am Ryan, and joining me today is John. Today we're going to be talking about police hacking and cryptic criminal messages, TikTok bad, and Russian hacker brought to the States to be jailed. How are you doing today, John? I'm just living the dream. <laughs> Good to hear. <laughs> Do you want to start us off? <laughs> yeah, we could talk about a joint operation that European and British law enforcement agencies uh, recently did. They arrested hundreds of alleged drug dealers and other criminals by infiltrating a global network. Um, it's this encrypted chat app called EncroChat. I believe I'm saying that right. And this was used by criminals because it was supposed to be end to end encrypted and they were plotting everything from drug deals to money laundering, extortion, even going in great lengths about certain hits they were going to do. Um, so this Encro Chat, I thought was actually extremely interesting how they implemented it. So they use this Android handset, which they physically disable GPS, camera, and microphone functionality to increase anonymity and security. But um, it, they didn't go into too much detail on what kind of encryption they use, but apparently these law enforcement officers were able to break the encryption and snoop on all these uh, messages. One of the interesting thing about the app is it uh, does secure instant messaging, VoIP calling. It has like self-destructing messages, so after a period of time, it would like delete. And it even had a kill code so users could remotely wipe all the data. Jeez. Um, so for this handset, they would pay, what, 1,500 pounds for a six-month subscription. And this in EncroChat had over 60,000 users worldwide and approximately 10,000 in the United Kingdom. Dang. So is it – so it's a service? It's not like it's not like in the App Store or whatever, like Wicker or something like that? You know, I actually haven't downloaded it because, like, if the police can hack it, I don't want it on my phone. <laughs> this is true. But <laughs> <laughs> not for anything nefarious, but, you know, just – the principle. But a uh, Europol said that <laughs> EncroChat. <laughs> Sheer silence is not reassuring. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, you said I wouldn't want it if the police could hack it. And I said, yeah, not for anything nefarious, just for the principle of it. And then you were just silence. <laughs> <laughs> just anyway, keep the silence. Continue. In. Continue. <laughs> Uh, so Europol came out and they said EncroChat phones were presented to customers guaranteeing perfect anonymity. Uh, there's no device or SIM card association with the customer's account. And there's, um, it said acquisition under conditions guaranteeing the absence of traceability. It had a perfect discretion, both of the encrypted interface and the terminal itself. So it had a dual operating system mm -hmm. that was encrypted to be hidden so it wasn't detectable. And like I said with the phone, they removed the camera, microphone, GPS, and it even says a USB port. Um, so French and Dutch, Dutch police successfully hacked into the network and were able to analyze millions of messages and hundreds of thousands of images in real time. Um, the National Crime Agency, Europol, and Metropolitan Police on Thursday announced that they shut down the EncroChat servers, arrested 746 suspects, including two law enforcement officers, um, which resulted in the seizure of over 54 million pounds in illegal cash, 77 firearms, including AK-47, some machine guns, handguns, it says four grenades. I'm kind of curious how they got those, you know. <laughs> hit me up Hit me up on the comments below. And uh, they got over 18,000 rounds, no, 1,800 rounds of ammunition. There's more than two tons of drugs they confiscated, over 28 million uh, Valium pills, and 55 high-value cars and 73 luxury watches. <laughs> so the law enforcement claimed they cracked the encryption code in March and had been getting data since April 1st, and then on June 13th, EncroChat realized the platform had been penetrated and sent a message to users urging them to throw their devices away as the server has become compromised. Dang. So I, I think it's extremely interesting, and if the encryption wasn't horrible, or however they got in, like if it was solid like Signal, which is the gold standard for this, yeah, like they would be good. They took away GPS and all the stuff that would make it easy for police to get after them yeah i'd be very curious to see how they set that up because that might be a uh, a template for uh for a lot of companies on how not to uh <laughs> to, to set up their stuff because as, we, as we've said in the past like even if they did have a really good encryption if it was implemented poorly which they may have done um like mm -hmm. whatsapp uh then it you know it leaves you open to to attack and vulnerabilities they didn't go into too much detail on what encryption they used. I'm, I am curious, but mm -hmm. I think they're keeping it under wraps as it seems like there's still a lot of ongoing investigations going on. Yeah. Or they developed a tool that can actually crack 256. I'll wait. 
<laughs> it is interesting, though. How many people were arrested? It said uh, 746 suspects. Jeez. Okay. Dang. Was there anyone that was actually linked to uh, like well-known organizations, or were they, for the most part, like just like separate drug dealers and stuff like that? It made it just seem like it was criminal organizations. It didn't specify anyone in particular. Okay. Yeah, it might be too early for them to actually say anything. Oh, yeah. I wish there was more information, you know. Yeah. I have to hit up my contact. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Well, that might be a future video then. We'll we'll maybe uh, give an update on that if you want to follow it. Oh, sure. All right. So if that's it, I'm going to go into uh, my article here. So this is... um, about TikTok, everyone's favorite annoying app. TikTok's always kind of had a, a negative reputation um, with a lot of people, and not necessarily in the way of what they're doing, but just kind of what the app is. Um, so if you don't know about TikTok, uh, it's been a little over three years uh, since TikTok has been launched. Uh, it's owned by a Chinese company called uh, ByteDance or BitDance. The video sharing social media kind of slash, I don't know what you want to call it. it. It exploded basically. It now has more than 2 billion downloads. It's one of the most popular apps. Uh, it beats out Instagram and YouTube for consumption time in the United States uh, and, and certain countries in Europe, which is insane to me because TikTok, basically it's a platform where you can react to certain songs or remixes of certain songs, both like physically and verbally. Um, and you can, you know, do duets with people and all kinds of crap, but they're usually like less than a minute long. So the fact that they beat out Instagram and especially YouTube that actually has, I mean, you can upload 10 hours of content to to YouTube in one video. (laughs) That's, that's a lot of video. And to be beat out by that in retention time, uh, and the time people are actually spending on the app is insane. So anyway. That's just kind of a little history and just kind of give you a picture of what TikTok is if you're not familiar with it. Uh, Most people are. um, It's pretty popular. But anyway, starting back in February of 2019, uh, TikTok was fined by the FTC for violations of COPPA, uh, which is a child uh, privacy and regulations. If you don't know what COPPA is or you want to learn more about it, we have other videos on that in previous episodes uh, where we go a lot more in depth. But basically, the regulators at the FTC uh, said that TikTok not only collected personal information from uh, children under 13 without the parents' consent, but they made these profiles public. And until October uh, October 2016, they let these kids uh, share their locations with anyone nearby, which, again, (laughs) is kind of insane uh, because basically with a click of the button, it would pinpoint where these, you know, uh, where a 12 year old is basically at all times. That sounds um, kind of useful. That... <laughs> John, I think that people of Encro Chat would be very interested. <laughs> John, stop. <laughs> but so obviously that was an extremely bad idea, and uh, they eventually took that away. As you know, in October 2016, uh, the developers knew. Uh, FTC said that the developers knew a significant percentage of their users were under 13, but they really didn't change anything about the app until uh, they started receiving thousands of complaints from the FTC. Um, so eventually, obviously, they ended up getting fined, and that's when they actually started changing things. Uh, the company then made, the, they just made an age gate, uh, basically just like YouTube does, where it like has a little, a little rolling wheel and you just pick your age. I can't remember the last time I actually like put my actual age on one of those things because um, it usually doesn't matter. So it was basically just a band aid uh, to get the FTC off their back. Um, it can be yeah, easily I usually say I was born in 1901. Yeah, I, I usually see how old it lets you go, and I usually pick the oldest one, which is usually like 1901. Um, but anyway, as we all know, it's easy to get around those with just lying about your age. I mean, what kid actually is going to put their actual age? If they do put their actual age, it does revert them to a more restricted version of TikTok, uh, where you can only, I believe you can only like and follow. You can't actually upload videos of yourself. But again, I mean, we've all seen TikTok videos. There's a bunch of freaking kids on there that obviously they just lied about their name. So anyway, after all this, um, they ended up getting banned by Indonesia and India. 
um, and they saw a huge decline in users. But obviously, as, as I said before, with 2 billion users currently, they got right back on the horse and they're now one of the leading uh, uh, top apps in the store today. Uh, the U.S. Army and Navy also banned the device from government-issued phones. And at that point, things kind of got rolling. Uh, the snowball effect started taking place. And more and more stuff started, started coming out about TikTok and about their affiliation uh, with the Chinese government. Um, so a former employee of TikTok told the Washington Post that they would remove videos at the request of the Chinese government. Um, and before this, TikTok and their parent company, uh, BitDance, they basically had been very adamant that they have no affiliation with the Chinese government. They were not controlling them, blah, blah, blah. The normal spiel from these type of companies like Blizzard and the such. But th this former employee said that any requests they got from the Chinese government, they would enact. Any laws that they had to follow from Beijing, they would enact and they would take down or censor videos accordingly. Uh, the app uh, was also used as a political tool. Uh, it was basically, it took a bunch of the users, um, ended up hacking into their accounts and used them uh, for a DOS attack, a denial of service attack, which basically sends a flood of information to like a website server. Uh, most notably, this was done on uh, Trump's uh, merchandise website. Uh, they actually took it down for a while because of the uh, uh, denial of service attacks. Uh, the security firm, Checkpoint also found several back doors into the app uh, shortly after this. The vulnerabilities uh, would allow hackers to send TikTok users malicious links via spoof text messages, uh, which once clicked would give that person complete control over the person's account, uh, which they could upload uh, videos in their name and also access private videos that the person had hid. Another weakness would have allowed retrieval of personal information from the app user through the company's website. So after this, a lot of stuff started coming out, as I said. Uh, the most uh, recent one, I guess, would be the uh, during the testing of iOS 14. So Apple was testing several apps, and they found that a bunch of them were secretly accessing users' clipboards, uh, which, if you're not familiar, this is all uh, where all your copied text and data is stored, where it waits to be pasted. Uh, when you copy something, it's not, it doesn't remove the last thing that was copied. It keeps it on a clipboard, is what it's called, and then you can go through there and paste whatever you want. Uh, the app developers quickly said that they had patched the issue at, uh, at BitDance. No further need for concern. However, after further testing from Apple security researchers, they found that the app was still stealing data from the clipboard. Uh, the company then blamed outdated uh, and unrelated ad code that was causing the issue, but they said they would release a new version and fix it again. I mean, I don't know about you, but that sounds to me like they had no intention of fixing the issue in the first place. Um, but anyway, so they finally apparently forced them to fix it or they just hit it better. I don't know. So an even more troubling aspect of this is Apple's use of universal clipboard feature. Uh, which basically means, as an example, if you were copying a password on your, you know, your iPhone for work, and it was signed into the same account as your iPad at home, uh, the if they got access to one of the clipboards, they would have access to both. Um, so basically, they could, you know, theoretically be getting any info that you paste on another device with the same account, and they could have access to all of it. For me, kind of the nail in the coffin uh, for this for TikTok in general. Um, and their parent company was a Reddit user, uh, which goes by the username of uh, Bangerlul. Apparently, so th this is his post. I paraphrase a, few, uh, a little bit of it just to make it easier to understand. Um, this is basically his, uh, his whole post here. He said, uh, so I can personally weigh in on this. I reverse engineered the app and feel confident in stating that I have a very strong understanding for how the app operates. TikTok is a data, data collection service thinly veiled as a social media network. If there is a way to get information on you, they are using it. The app collects phone hardware, other apps you've installed, everything network related, including IP, your router's Mac, uh, your Wi-Fi name, and your GPS. It sets up a local proxy server on your device with zero authentication, and it has protections coded into the app, which makes it act differently if they detect that you're trying to break in to see what they're doing. There's also some code in some versions that lets the app download a zip file, open it, and run it on your device, which no legitimate app ever needs. There also weren't even using HTTPS, which allowed anyone to break into the app and view other users' emails, birthdates, and names. As if that wasn't enough, they also have a function in the app 
that automatically makes it look like your first post or two are getting likes and views, hopefully enticing you to post more. They also encrypt all analytical data with a changing algorithm with each, with each update. So the, <laughs> I know it's a lot of info, but basically TikTok bad. Um, <laughs> do, do you have any thoughts, John? Um, I personally don't trust anything that's from China. I don't care what the company is, but... I feel like this has been known for a while and it just reaffirms that like the Chinese government is overreaching and spying on everyone, be it mm -hmm. Wiggers or, or, or Uyghurs, I think is how it's pronounced. Um, or just any, anyone they can. Um, we, we see this increasingly with the Hong Kong situation going on and the different laws that they're passing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, you know, I, I personally don't download TikTok, and, uh, I think it's, and, and huge evasion of like privacy and uh i hope i hope something comes of this instead of you know just a slap on the wrist like it always seems to be yeah well a lot of uh companies have started banning the use of this app on their company-owned devices um, the pentagon even put out a statement and said not to download it on the, they warned their uh their employees from downloading it at all whether it's on their government or personal device um obviously they can't tell them not to download it um, but they did say we advise strongly advise that you don't download it in light of certain things that have come out. Um, this, uh, the Reddit user, uh, Bangalore, he also said that he reverse engineered, um, apps like Twitter and Instagram. And he said, even though they are uh, also taking data, he said it is nowhere near, um, as much data as TikTok actually takes. He said, it's like comparing a cup of water to the ocean. He's like, it, just the amount of data that they are taking from people's phones and what you do on your phones. And even beyond that, I mean, as he said, it's taking your IP, your router, Mac, your Wi-Fi name, like no app needs that info. Um, obviously, especially since it's a, it's a freaking so, well, supposed to be a social media platform, you know, a video sharing site where you, you know, cha-cha along with the, the latest remix of Gucci gang. Like it, <laughs> it just, <laughs> like yes i know that's a stupid ref or a stupid analogy but like it the, the app itself is made for such a simple task it, it there's no reason that it actually has to take this much data and uh the fact that they are um obviously owned by a chinese company and supposedly according to a former employee they do uh they will do the bidding of of the chinese government so i mean yeah, it it's bad. I I wouldn't use it. I would strongly advise not to use TikTok. I don't want to get into a bigger discussion, but it really comes down: if any service is free, you are the product. You're paying with your information. Be yeah, it Facebook, this is true. be it TikTok, be it even Google, which has been known to manipulate search results. Like, yeah. um, and you know, I I really hope this you know opens people's eyes to the egregious privacy like invasion that these companies be it us or chinese mm -hmm. are, are doing and um no i definitely agree and i know we talked about this in the um uh the notion club uh, where we talked about should data rights be a be a fundamental human right um and i know there's a lot of discussion around that and some of us kind of disagreed on it i know um uh, I know Aaron's not here to, to, to give his opinion uh, straight from him, but I know he was more of the opinion of that where you are the product and for some stuff, if you're willing to take that, you know, responsibility or whatever, that's fine. Like the companies have to make money somehow. Um, but for this, I would, I would personally say that this is a little different because this is, it's not blatant. Um, they're, they're obviously trying to hide what they're doing so that they don't get outright banned and don't get outright shut down. I would assume at this point, everyone knows that Google and Facebook and stuff, uh, take a certain amount of your data. I mean, we get targeted ads and stuff on it. It's basically be become a meme at this point of, you know, Alexa listening to what you're saying or, you know, the Google, <laughs> Google voice always listening to what you're saying. But like the fact that they actually coded this app, TikTok to try to cover its tracks if you try to reverse engineer the app to me that's that's even worse <laughs> than anything else that we've seen so far i mean it it's just insane it lets the app download stuff to your phone directly without even asking you i mean it sets up a freaking proxy server on your device itself like all that stuff is just i don't know this is this is definitely worse than 
than anything I've I've seen before personally. It also makes me wonder because I know Apple um, they're they're supposed to have strict verification of uh, apps that get submitted on the App Store. Yes, and yep. I wonder why they didn't catch any of this. This seems extremely um, negligent. And mm-hmm. if if it is this blatant, how much stuff they're doing? Like how come Apple and all their um, intelligence with their like programmers and everything? How come yep. they couldn't? catch this in like an audit or something like that no i definitely agree i don't i don't know how uh deeply they look at the apps that are going onto the store i know they look for uh normal things like you know malware and stuff like that they do scans and stuff like that i don't know if they're actually reverse engineering the apps to see what they're doing um yeah i don't know how extensive their testing is i have no idea um i haven't spoken with anyone at apple um or or researched it at all to see exactly what their vetting process is and if they are hiding it relatively well, I mean, if they've survived this long um, and no one's caught them, I mean, I would assume they're hiding it at least somewhat well. But obviously, once you, uh, once this uh, Reddit user actually reverse engineered the app, he was able to see what was actually going on. But yeah, I don't know. I, I would be very curious to see or to have an explanation, I guess, from certain companies on why they're, they've allowed this to be on their store. Because as far as I know, it's still on like every store. Uh, you can download it. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but <laughs> I'd be curious to hear what they have to say about it. Maybe Apple's a shill for the Chinese government. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Check our new podcast, Conspiracy Time. <laughs> Conspiracy Mondays with John from Reno. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> you want to go on to your topic here, John? Instead of China, we have some Russian stuff, but not tied to the Russian government um, as far as we know, but we will um, <laughs> go into some sketchy stuff they were trying to do. Well, but there's a Russian us. carter who was arrested um, uh, and sentenced to nine years by United States uh, District Court. Um, his name is Aleski Yurovich Burkov. Yes. Um, he pled guilty to running two illegal websites devoted to credit card fraud, computer hacking, and other crimes. Um, so he pled guilty in January uh, to two of the five charges against him for credit card fraud, uh, one count of device access device fraud, and one count of conspiracy to commit access device fraud, identity theft, computer intrusion, wire fraud, and money laundering. Um, it said, Burkov admitted to operating a website called Card Planet, and this was dedicated to buying and selling stolen credit card and debit card data which you could purchase anywhere from $2.50 to $10 uh, per card. As it shows, your information is not worth that much. You would get stuff like what kind of card type, if it was a Visa or a MasterCard, um, the origin of where it was, like what country, and the availability of the card owner's information. So the U.S. Department of Justice, um, it said Card Planet hosted roughly 150,000 payment card details between 2009 and 2013, most of which belonged to U.S. citizens and was used to make over 20 million in fraudulent purchases. Um, in addition to Card Planet, Burkov ran another invite only form, specifically targeting elite cyber criminals where they advertised their stolen uh, PII, uh, personal identifiable information, uh, malicious software, and other criminal services like money laundering and hacking. Uh, to become a member of this form, you'd have to pay $5,000 as an insurance, and three existing members would have to vouch for you. Um, they tried to do this to keep law enforcement from accessing the form and gathering information, but obviously it didn't work out too well. So they eventually caught Burkov. He was in Tel Aviv, Israel at the airport um, in December 2015, and he was extradited to the U.S. in uh, November 2019. Dang. Um, after he lost his appeals to the Israeli Supreme Court and the Israeli High Court of Justice. But before this, this is the part of, I think is interesting, and I, I kind of wonder why uh, they were trying to do this. Russia was trying to offer Israel a deal where they would release one of their Israeli citizens they had, uh, Nama Ishkar, um, in exchange for uh, Burkov. <laughs> um, so, you know, and I, I kind of wonder why, like, obviously he's a criminal. Like, would Russia give him the same punishment or would they just give him a slap on the wrist? Good old Russia. Um, <laughs> but Israel <laughs> refused and they approved the U.S. extradition request. So now he's sitting in jail for nine years. I don't know. Do you do you think that's a, a long enough sentence? They, they did say they were trying to get 15 years, but uh, for some reason it was lowered. 
Yeah, because I mean, the, the judge sentenced them only to nine. It says, but I mean, any any amount of time you spend in jail obviously is that's years of your life that are just gone. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm I'm not gonna fall into that trap of being like, oh well, he should have got life in prison or like something like that. But like, <laughs> he still did get nine <laughs> years. But like twenty million because of him mm-hmm. and his website. I mean, that's a lot of money that has been stolen from people. I mean, if you like you know, broke into a bank or something and stole that amount of money, you'd be in jail for a lot longer than nine years. But the fact that it was a cyber crime, I, I feel like they, they kind of lessened the sentence a little bit. Well, cyber crime's always been a strange one because uh, it could be like, there's been cases where someone did something simple as downloading a Michael Jackson album. And mm-hmm. then they hit him with like 40 years in prison. Yeah, but then you have this dude example. who facilitated uh 20 million dollars in fraudulent purchases with his website yeah. and he's only getting nine years like uh yeah it's it, what you know it, it's hit or miss really with these with these yeah, sentences i guess they never miss huh? um, you know they, there's these people that basically get you know thrown in jail and the key thrown away and then there's other people that they're kind of like oh well you know yeah it's 20 million dollars but you know it's it's that online it's a cyber crime thing we'll just you know nine years that's good you didn't actually do anything physically like you didn't kill someone or something but it's like it's the same thing i mean <laughs> if you broke into someone's house and stole <laughs> you know everything they own or you facilitated it online for someone else to do it like it's the same thing <laughs> like <laughs> i don't know it just it seems like it flip flops back and forth year to year it is extremely interesting. I was watching a, a YouTube video. It was from the um, the hacker conference, uh, DEF CON, mm-hmm. and they were talking about how they caught another Russian carter um, uh, hacker that was selling credit card information, mm-hmm. and uh, I thought it was extremely interesting. I guess it wasn't DEF CON. It was Black Hat, my bad. But Roman Selizanez? Sel- Sel- I, can't, I can't speak <laughs> Russian. <laughs> but... That's an extremely interesting video, and if you have 50, 50 minutes of your time, I'd watch that, and they kind of go um, through all the details and how they caught this guy. And apparently his password in Russian was butthole123. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kid you not. <laughs> I like it. Nice. Uncrackable. <laughs> <laughs> Which is Ochko. It's like O-C-H-K-O is the Russian uh, spelling. but <laughs> <laughs> I won't try to pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> okay and, and just for clarification when you say carter you mean like c-a-r-d-e-r like someone who steals credit card information yeah okay. uh, c-a-r-d-e-r like like think card but just with e-r on the end okay uh, that's see- just the name they give yeah. to these people who um like uh facilitate like sell either they stole on credit card information or they steal it themselves okay yeah i just want to clarify so there wasn't any confusion well i'm i'm actually surprised that they they actually got him to the States usually or extraditing someone back to the States is pretty difficult. Um, IE Snowden, like, (laughs) well, I mean, with this, um, usually if, if you're in the country, like say if he was in Russia, Russia would not have played ball, but like, um, with this guy, he was in Israel and the other guy that I mentioned, um, he was actually caught in the Maldives. And that was extremely interesting as the Maldives didn't have a, um, like a, a extradition treaty um it was just a request that the state yeah. department sent over and was like hey you know this guy is horrible uh mm. you mind sending them to us and they're like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was that's pretty fortunate especially like twice in a row <laughs> but yeah it, yeah obviously if he was in russia that would not have happened because you know if, if the russian government didn't agree with someone they would they wouldn't be there anyways so mm-hmm. you know poof it disappeared <laughs> wow that's weird freaking magic trick oh look now he's in a gulag inside the <laughs> how did he get there you're supposed to be reporting the news how'd you get in the gulag <laughs> wow that's crazy damn bro <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> tune in next week when we tour an actual Russian gulag <laughs> <laughs> because we got extradited there <laughs> oh no hey, hey, hey whoa you know, I was, I, I did, I was reading the article uh, for EncroChat, and mm. it did say um, the National Crime Agency worked closely with policing partners to su- successfully mitigate more than 200 threats to life from rival gangs from carrying out kidnappings and executions. So, Jeez. 
I don't know. Kidnappings, it kind of goes in line with that TikTok thing, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think that's where they were going with that. <laughs> you know, maybe not Maybe not entirely, but who knows? Who knows what the Chinese government's doing with this information? <laughs> I mean, this is true. We like That is kind of the unanswered question. They, they keep on pulling this data from everywhere. But we don't really know what they're doing with the data. Like, we know what's going to the Chinese government, obviously, because the Chinese government controls everything inside China. But what they're actually doing, are they just, like, creating a data bank to use later? Or are they, like, creating profiles on every person? Like, we don't we don't really know. You know, another thing I was thinking, obviously, none of this has been proven or anything. But um, because alleged. TikTok is a video app, maybe are they using it to help train some of their facial recognition algorithms? Like... We already know that they're extremely good um, with with their surveillance and yep. facial recognition already. Like, are they yep. trying to build profiles on people not only in China but in other countries like the U.S. or I, again, yeah, I have no idea. Down the rabbit I mean, hole we go. Yeah, that that's a that's a conspiracy theory. Monday is a <laughs> video. Wait, crap! Isn't it Monday today? Oh man, look at that. Oh no. Um, <laughs> yeah, that. That would definitely be you something. You want to take the blue pill or the <laughs> red pill? <laughs> I'll take both. <laughs> well, not the Cialis, baby. Oh, oh no. no. That's not where I was going with that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. that. The thing with the with them using it for facial recognition, though, like what would be the, the end goal for that, though? Unless they were actually hacking into our surveillance systems, what would be the point of having facial recognition of people living in the states like I'm, I'm just asking i'm not i'm not seeing the connection in the dots with that one um not to get too conspiracy theorists but all of our chips are already made in china um i think intel might have one fab in the united states for making chips but um it's only for like processors all the other stuff like modems um rfid all that stuff like most mm -hmm. of it's all made in china who knows what kind of backdoors they're implementing um as we know the chinese government can pretty much do whatever they want. Um, well, yeah, I mean, they literally change their constitution. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think there's a reason why the, the federal government is saying, hey, maybe we shouldn't use Huawei phones for, you know, government. Um, yeah. I, I think there's a bigger picture we don't understand, and I'm just trying to, I'm drawing some conclusions that haven't been founded, but I, I think it's extremely interesting, especially with what China's doing with their Belt and Road Initiative. They're providing tons of infrastructure to Africa. Yeah. Um, yeah well I, I don't want to get too off the off topic but it who knows i mean with that aspect i think that one at least to me it seems kind of straightforward um if anyone has any different ideas or whatever feel free to comment but to me it seems like they just don't want to be so dependent on other countries around them namely the united states because i mean a lot of stuff comes from the united states into china right like not just monetarily so like if they're investing heavily into uh, like Africa, for instance, um, and getting resources from there, then they don't need to rely on other countries. And if they don't need to rely on other countries, namely the United States, who knows, they could call us out on our debt or they could basically do whatever they want without fear of repercussions, such as like sanctions and stuff like that, because they won't be trading with anyone else. Um, personally, I think that that's, that's kind of the obvious route that they're trying to go. They're trying to be completely self-sufficient so that they can actually enact the things that they want to enact. Um, cause if they actually have, you know, the freaking bamboo curtain around China, uh, we can't really do anything about it at that point. If they're completely self-sufficient. Oh, we got nukes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so do a bunch of other countries though. That's not really a plausible, uh, option at this point. Not anymore. Anyways, we got over 4,000. I mean, after the 1940s, that kind of, uh, kind of went out the window as a plausible option mm. once other countries started getting nukes like <laughs> we launch ours they launch theirs mutual destruction you know it's kind of bad for the environment <laughs> well another thing is that china has been known they have these advanced persistent threats they're like these nation state level hackers and yeah. they've been known to hack into all kinds of things i think the opm breach on the department of defense was a link to China. There's yeah. all kinds of, like they're gathering tons of information. And another thing, uh, potentially seeing we're talking about the OPM breach and TikTok, maybe they're trying to pull all this together so they can be able to blackmail 
um, people in uh, powerful positions, like in the military or in the yeah. State Department no, that's or true. something like that. I mean, that was um, that was a concern with uh, with Snapchat. I remember um, it was a couple of years ago. I don't know if it was actually found out to be true, but it was alleged that Russia had hacked into Snapchat server and was basically stealing nudes <laughs> that were being sent uh, through Snapchat to be able to blackmail people into doing what they wanted. Um, that they were creating this like database of, <laughs> of nudes for <laughs> to be able to blackmail people. I don't know if that was actually true, um, but that was a alleged thing that was going on. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the same thing that... Uh, Imagine that being your job. You're just looking at not appealing people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was just all filtered into a database. I don't know if there was a one person going through every photo, <laughs> swiping left or right on whether it goes into the database or not. Hey, someone has to manage the database. Like, what if it crashed? I'm like, oh, no, I got to fix it. Well, do you have anything else, uh, John? Thank you for tuning into the Vice Casting Couch. We'll see you next Monday with a new episode. Make sure to comment and subscribe and follow us on Patreon. Possibly. Possibly. I know it's been a while since we've uh, uploaded. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank our new sponsor, ExpressVPN, for sponsoring our video. <laughs> uh, I am using them, but no, <laughs> they're not a sponsor. We are poor. We have no sponsors. Um, <laughs> we haven't uploaded in a while. Um, we've all kind of been pretty busy, especially with everything going on. The tech industry has not really slowed down. Maybe in some areas, but at, at least with us, it, it's actually sped up. So yeah, we will uh, we'll try to record more in the future. John, Brian, <laughs> you got anything to add? If you want to follow our OnlyFans, link in oh, the description. Oh my goodness! All right, well we're <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna stop. Let's stop. <laughs>